Hey there, welcome to the channel. Today, I'm making a gluten-free chicken pot pie casserole with a hash brown potato topping instead of a crust. I'm Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. So please consider hitting subscribe and let me show you how I made this. So before we get cooking, let's just go over the ingredients. I am gonna prep the vegetables separately. You guys don't need to see me peel potatoes and chop up an onion. So I'm gonna get those separate. So let's go over these ingredients so we can just get to cooking. So fresh ingredients. I've got about four potatoes. I'm gonna use two in the filling and another couple for the hash browns on the top. So I will show you what we do with these before I add them to the top. You could also use some frozen hash browns that are just thawed. So I'm gonna use about three quarters of a pound to a pound of potatoes for the top and then just a couple small to medium potatoes for the inside. One or two carrots. I've got a large one here, so I'm using that and a piece of another one. One large onion I'm gonna chop. One stalk of celery that I'm gonna chop. I'm gonna use some frozen broccoli, some frozen corn, some frozen peas. And I also don't have fresh mushrooms, so I'm gonna use a can of them that I will just drain. Leave the mushrooms out if you don't like them. Use fresh, whatever you wanna do there. So let's get to our seasoning stuff. I'm gonna use a little bit of garlic in it, probably about a tablespoon of minced garlic. Salt and pepper, of course. I think for the hash brown potatoes, I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoned salt instead of regular salt, just for some extra flavor and color. I don't have any fresh parsley right now. It's just now starting to grow really well, so I'm gonna let it grow. So I'm gonna substitute with some dried parsley. I do have a little bit of fresh thyme and rosemary that I'm using. Feel free to use dried. I'm gonna use olive oil and butter to saute my vegetables for extra flavor. We're gonna need chicken, of course. I've got a few cups of chicken here. This is from a chicken we had the other night. So I'm gonna chop it up a little further and we'll use that in our mix. I've got some chicken broth hiding back here in the back. About four cups of it. This is homemade. I made it with the carcass of the chicken in the Instapot, but by all means, use your favorite chicken broth or vegetable broth. I've got some half and half that we're gonna use to make it creamy. You could use heavy cream. I use half and half at home most often, so I'm gonna use that. And to thicken it, I'm gonna use some cornstarch to give everything a nice consistency. That's all my ingredients. So let me get these prepped and then we'll start cooking. We're over at the stove. So let me show you these shredded potatoes before we get started. So I ended up grabbing a third potato cause I didn't know if there would be enough. And if I don't need it, I don't need it. So I just shredded it into some cold water to keep it from oxidizing and turning brown on us. And to shred it, I just used the salad shooter. If you guys remember what a salad shooter is, leave it in the comments below. My mom got this for me at a yard sale and it actually works great. I've had this for years at this point. So I've got it sh them shredded in here. I'm going to drain them. I'm going to wring them out in a clean towel to try to get as much moisture out as I can. I'm gonna toss them in about a tablespoon or two of olive oil and some seasoned salt and pepper. So that's what I'm gonna do this. I am gonna do it off camera, I think. But like I said, tablespoon, two tablespoons of olive oil, seasoned salt and pepper, and that'll be our topping for the pot pie. So to our pan, I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm also gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil. And now I'm gonna heat this up over medium high heat and we're gonna saute our vegetables for a few minutes. All right, let's start adding our vegetables. I'm gonna add those potatoes. My carrots are diced, or pieces. Celery, my onion. I'm gonna add my mushrooms so they can start drying out as well. Let's give everything a good stir, and we wanna saute this for probably five or six minutes until everything starts to soften. So I'm gonna let this go just a minute or two, and then we'll add a little bit of seasoning to it and that'll help move it along faster. So I just added a little bit of salt and pepper, maybe two pinches of salt and one pinch of pepper, and the salt will help draw the moisture out of the vegetables so we can evaporate some of that unwanted water. So we're just gonna keep sauteing this for a few more minutes. 
Okay, so we've been going about five or six minutes. I'm gonna let it go just another couple minutes because everything is starting to soften nicely. So maybe two more minutes and then we'll keep adding more ingredients to this. Okay, so let's add some garlic. I think we're probably good. There's a big spoonful of garlic in there. Get it mixed in. Is that our dried parsley? If you wanna use fresh, by all means you can. I just don't have enough right now to use fresh. So I'm gonna use probably a good teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. Let's also add my rosemary and my thyme that I chopped up. So I don't know, two or three sprigs of thyme and about a three inch piece of rosemary that I just took all the leaves off and chopped it up. This is all to taste. So if you don't like something, leave it out. Or if you like more of something else, add more. All right, I think we're getting to the point where we can actually get the oven ready because we're gonna bake this in the end. So it's gonna bake at 375 degrees for about 30 minutes or so. So I'm gonna turn my oven on and start it preheating. Let's add our frozen vegetables to the mix. So I've got probably about three cups of broccoli. It was frozen. I ran it under some water just so I could chop it up a little bit. So I'm gonna throw that in there. I've got about three quarters of a cup to a cup of frozen corn kernels as well as peas. Give everything a stir. Guys, I am using probably the biggest pan I have for this. And I can tell you right now, it's supposed to make a 13 by nine and I'm gonna be way over. The good thing is, is I have that extra potato in my shredded potatoes. So I think I'll make a separate small pan for my mother-in-law to take to her. And then if there's still extra, it may end up being a bowl of soup, we'll see. Now it's time to add some liquid to it. I've got four cups of chicken broth. Use whatever chicken broth you like or vegetable broth. This is homemade that I made in the Instapot. So I'm gonna dump about three cups of it into it because I'm gonna put some cornstarch into the rest so we can thicken this up. All right, so the rest I will leave for cornstarch slurry. So I've got probably three to four cups of chicken here. I've chopped it up and throw that in there. Give it a big mix. Okay, so I've got our chicken broth here. So this is coming up to a pretty good simmer. So I'm gonna add two heaping tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm gonna give it a whisk. Get everything smooth. All right, I'm gonna add this. It should start thickening, thickening up. While this starts thickening, I'm gonna get my potatoes ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain those and get them dried off as best I can. All right, so I've let this simmer for a bit while I strained out the shredded potato portion, and it's not as thick as I would like. So I'm gonna add some more cornstarch. I'm gonna add another heaping tablespoon. I'm gonna whisk it into my half and half. And let's add it in. And guys, that extra tablespoon of cornstarch did wonderfully as far as thickening it up, thickening it up where I wanted it. Now we just need to test it for seasonings if it needs salt and pepper, and then we will get the topping done. So I took our shredded potatoes. I put about a tablespoon or two of olive oil. I tossed it around. I just added maybe quarter to a half teaspoon of seasoned salt. Let's toss that around. The reason you didn't see it is because I didn't hit record, which happens sometimes. Let's add a little bit of black pepper to the mix. 
All right, now let's get our pot pie topped with everything and get it baked off. So I've got my 13 by nine. I've got my great big skillet of mix in here. I think I'm gonna ladle it so I don't spill it everywhere, hopefully. So I've just filled this up a little bit. I'm trying to make sure how much is gonna fit. It looks like it's all gonna fit in here, but I think I have enough to do a separate one for my mother-in-law. So I'm gonna do a small uh, takeout pan for her. So let me get that ready as well. Let's take our shredded potatoes and get it evenly across the top of both of these. Now I need to bake these off for about 30 to probably 35 minutes until the potatoes are tender and they should be golden. So let's get this baked off and then we'll give it a taste. So our pot pie is done. I baked it about 35 minutes and everything is nice and tender. The potatoes didn't brown up quite as much as I would like as far as crispiness, but that's okay. They're tender and they're cooked through and I actually kind of like this better than a crust, I think, idea-wise anyway. Made a ton, made over a 13 by nine. So let's give it a taste. The diced potatoes are cooked through. Everything else is really good. The chicken was already cooked. We just had to heat it. Let's try a little bit of that topping. It's tender. Definitely a different texture than the other potatoes, which is nice. I did have a little bit of parsley that I just took off a few leaves so I could chop it up because the potatoes are kind of brown or beige and you know, beige isn't always very attractive when you're trying to eat. So I put a little green on it. I really like this option as a pot pie topping to do shredded potatoes instead of a crust. Totally could use frozen potatoes, hash browns that you thought out a little bit. Those would work great and save you some time. Guys, that's all I have for today. Leave me any comments below. What vegetables would you leave out? What vegetables would you add? This is totally customizable. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.